Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be talking about this tank here, getting an update on the ick situation here. I hope you'll hang in there with me. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how we took care of this problem and what you can do to make sure that you don't get ick in your tank. So hang in there with me and we'll be right back. So as I said, a few days ago we had an ick situation in this tank and I wanted to talk about some of the techniques that I had to employ to get this under control. And uh, right now I don't see any ick in this tank whatsoever, but I want to talk to you about how we got there and how I was successful at beating this disease, or at least beating it at this point anyway. There's a few more things that we need to do to ensure this, but I wanted to talk about some of the techniques that we had to put together to keep this going. Number one, this product right here, Ick. If you um, are familiar with this product, it's probably because you watch Aquarium Co-op or some other channels. Uh, Cory at Aquarium Co-op, uh, which is just north of me here in the Everett area, really recommends this, and I gotta tell you, he's spot on. And uh, no pun intended there, but he is spot on on his, uh, his recommendations for this. It is an absolutely amazing product. So let's talk about the ick process, what happens, and how we get rid of it, and why this uh, particular product is so important. Number one, the first thing that we have to do is treat the ick with the instructions that are on the back of this bottle. So. We have a 20 gallon tank here. It's not really 20 gallons, but they recommend a teaspoon for every 10 gallons. And uh, you kind of have to, you know, really reconcile in your mind where the displacement in the tank is based on substrate, on hardscape, on plants, all the different things, wood, all the different things that are in the tank and take those things into consideration. So basically, I went with one and three quarter tables or teaspoons of uh, the product ICAX here and that really was what I thought was going to be a good amount of uh, the medication in order to really cure this. So the other thing that had to happen during this process was raising the temperature. Now we went from 81 degrees is which I keep this temperature at in this tank at all times with a very good heater. It's a digital uh, heater that is extremely uh, accurate and extremely powerful. So what I did is raise the temperature up to 84 degrees uh, the second day. On the third day I uh, raised it up even further. I went to 86 degrees. I was going to leave it there but then I did notice that I was still seeing spots on some of the fish on the third day and I was really kind of concerned about that. So I jacked the, the heat up to about 89. Now, when you get to 89 degrees, you're getting into an area where things can be a little bit dangerous on the fish, the plants, all kinds of different things can happen here. But what happens with the ick spores at that temperature is, is there, and with the medication, between the two of them, you really don't have an opportunity for those spores when they fall down off the fish and get into the substrate here and then they want to bloom again, they don't have an opportunity to do that because in order for them to bloom and free float and find a host, they have to survive in the water. If the water is at that temperature and you have your ickex in there, they just can't do that. Now, the third thing that I had to do, because when you're raising the temperature up like that, you're really depleting the amount of oxygen that's in the water as well. Those kind of temperatures can be extremely dangerous to your fish as far as oxygenation goes. And so, as you can see, I added an air stone to this. Now, what that does is that provides us with that extra little amount of air that we really need to keep our fish healthy, because what happens is the ick often attacks the gills in the fish and uh, 
you know, it's hard for them to breathe as it is, and when you raise the temperature like that, it even makes it harder. Now, ICX is good for all invertebrates. It does not hurt them in any way, and uh, any kind of non-scale uh, fish, such as your quarry cats, your autosynclus, your uh, placosimus, all of those fish, um, you know, some of the medications can be very, very tough on them. In this particular case here, uh, ICX will not bother any of those invertebrates or fish that are scaleless. So that's very important to note when you're using this. Am I a advocate for this particular uh, medication? Yes, and I'll tell you why. Because in four days, four and a half days roughly, I don't see any disease in this tank. Now, some of the things that we're going to have to do is continue on with some of the uh, techniques that we're using already. And when we come back, we're going to talk about that and what we need to do to make sure that we have wiped out ick in this tank altogether. So stick with me, and when we come back, we'll talk about that. So when we're talking about the techniques that we used here, as I said, some of the techniques were raising the temperature up in the tank gradually. You want to do that gradually for a reason. You don't want to shock your fish. You don't want to shock the system of the tank. Uh, so adding it a few degrees every day until you get to where you have a heat source that is um, what I would say uh, in the cure stage of the ick um, problem and that is somewhere between 84 and 86 degrees. In this case I had to go up to 89 and I did that simply because I knew that by adding a air stone in there and uh, keeping the medication going uh, that we were in pretty good shape here with the kinds of plants that we had in the tank. Now, not everybody's tank is going to be uh, able to do that. In other words, uh, you have to really analyze the particular situation that you're in and see if that's something that you can do with your tank. Some of the plants in uh, people's tanks will not tolerate that. It just depends on the kind of plants that you have in there. I did an assessment on this uh, with the Crips, uh, the Repens, the uh, Anubias, and the Swords. I uh, did a little bit of research on that and found that these plants over a short period of time, and I'm not talking about weeks and weeks here, but over a week or a week and a half, they are able to sustain uh, those temperatures and do okay with those. Now these are very low uh, light plants uh, to medium light plants. They're not anything that requires a lot of light. And uh, anyway, so the temperature situation in the tank um, was one that I felt that I could bring that, dial that up, I should say, to a comfortable situation for uh, not only the medication to work correctly, but for the spores when they bloom and they free float in the water so that they don't attach to your fish again, that, uh, that like I said, that uh, getting it up to 89 degrees really gave me a lot of confidence that the ick was not going to be able to tolerate that. And on the, the fifth day now that we've been doing this, almost five days, I should say, uh, we are pretty much ick free as far as what I can see on the fish. Now, does that mean that we are ick free period? No, it doesn't. And the reason why I say that is because ick can be a little bit tricky. It can come back. Now, what we're going to do for the next week or so is we're going to continue to medicate. I want to mention something though before I get into uh, you know what we're going to do over the next week and talk about a little bit about some other things that I decided to do. Now, just like when you're sick or whatever, the first thing you want to do is go, you know, relax and hide someplace. You don't want a lot of people around you. You don't want to be bothered a lot. So if you're having your lights on in your tank for, uh, let's say, six to eight hours a day, which is typically what I do, and uh, it's, it's moderate light, it's not real intense light because of the plants in this particular tank, they don't require that. But you still have to keep in mind that um, the light itself is something that is going to stress the fish out. In other words, 
It's kind of like, you know, us not feeling well and somebody coming in and bothering us all the time or whatever. We don't want to be bothered. We'd like to be in a dark area, you know, with our blanket or our, you know, whatever, and uh, just have it kind of quiet and, and relaxing so that we can feel better. And that's the same with fish. I mean, it's just like any creature out there that is sick or whatever, you know, they need that time to have some alone time or whatever. So turning your lights off isn't going to hurt your plants or anything for four, five, six days. And you can gradually turn the lights back on for short periods of time uh, after the fifth or sixth day when you start to see that it go away. But you want to do all of these things very gradually because the worst thing that you can do is turn the heat way back down, turn the lights way back up, and then you've got a situation or an environment for if there's any ick spores in there for them to spread through your tank and then you got to go through the whole process again. And that's something you really don't want to do, obviously. So, um, Ick X Man, I got to tell you, I really love this stuff. I think it's a great product. And, uh, you know, I don't get sponsored by these guys. And uh, I really. Uh, got my information about ICX, like I said, from Corey over at Aquarium Co-op, who I've never met. I don't know Corey. Uh, I've never met him, but I watch his channel all the time, and I know that he talks about this. And there's several other channels out there that are in the United States. I'm not sure if this product is found uh, overseas, so George Farmer or Green Aqua or some of those channels are probably not going to be talking about this product very much, but uh, you can get this at your local fish store. You cannot get it at the hard box stores like Petco or uh, places like that, but you can buy it online through Walmart. And uh, also, if you go to Quarry Aquarium Co-op, he will send it to you. Now, I happen to have this on hand because the last time I had ick, like I said, was several years ago, and uh, I was very concerned about ever having it again because it was such a drag that I decided to keep this product on hand and the advice of, of uh, Corey up at Aquarium Co-op. So I did keep it on hand, and I'm sure glad that I did because the worst thing you can do is not have medications on hand when you need them. Uh, that's just a real disaster because you don't know if you're gonna be able to find the medication, number one, you don't know how quickly somebody can ship it to you. By the way, if you do need this product and you live in the United States, Corey will ship this out to you right away, at least he used to in the past. You might wanna check on that uh, through their website, that's um, uh, Aquarium Co-op, and uh, you can look up their website, it's not hard to find. And uh, he will ship this stuff out to you in a timely manner because he understands how important it is that you get this. So I believe that you can get this even overnight by him if you're willing to pay for it. If this is a product that you want to take my advice on and his advice on is something that really works well, then he can get that to you. Uh, you shouldn't have any problems and again there are other places online if you go to Amazon they'll show you a couple of different places but I noticed that it takes two three days with those places to get this stuff to you and there are no options for getting it sooner and by then you know it can cause a lot of disaster in your tank within a four or five day period so time is of the essence and it's the most important thing so where do we go from here like I said, I'm going to continue medicating the tank over the next five to six days, maybe seven days, and just to ensure that we are uh, ick free, to be honest with you. And the second thing that we're going to do is we're going to keep that temperature at that higher level because it's so important that uh, we don't reduce that really quickly. Now, after seven days, um, let me turn this computer off here. Driving us nuts while we're doing this. Anyways, after um, four or five days here, we're, we're going to uh, start to reduce that temperature and we're gonna ratchet it down by a few degrees every day. Again, we don't want to drop it way back down and we don't want to just stop the medication because 
basically when you do that, you're putting the tank into shock again. You're, you're gotta, you really have to be careful to gradually take all of this stuff down. Now, when this is all over, the one thing that we're going to do is we're gonna add our carbon filters back in. Uh, if you are using carbon filter, if you're just using sponge filters or something like that, you don't have to worry about that. In this particular tank, there is a carbon uh, filter component to it, so that was removed. I maybe mentioned that in the original video, but I'll mention that again to you. If you do have a carbon system in your tank, you do need to remove that when you're using this product right here because it will mitigate the... Uh, the medication and uh, it's it's not going to work effectively obviously so uh, what we're going to do after about seven days is we're going to add our carbon back into the tank and we're not going to add any more medication but there will be some medication in the tank over a few days before that carbon and your water changes if you're doing those correctly and you're following like I tell you to do you're going to be doing those water changes and you're going to have a small amount of medication in the tank and then you're going to transition everything back to normal and uh, hopefully if you do all of that you're going to be successful in curing this and not see this in your tanks again now um, again how ick is introduced to your tank is a really really hard thing to understand because as I said in my original video, I did not introduce any new fish, no invertebrates, no new plants, nothing. Because it can come in on plants too. If you take it, uh, plants from someone else's tank who's had an ick problem, it can be attached to those plants. So you got to be really, really careful to quarantine your plants just like you would your fish when you get them and not put them directly into your tank if you're getting them from someone else. Now, if you're getting them from a company that guarantees that they're disease-free, snail-free, all of that kind of stuff, then you don't have to worry about that. That's kind of on them. But uh, if you are getting cuttings from someone else and getting plants from someone else's tank, you want to make sure you quarantine those plants just like you do fish to make sure that you're not having a situation where uh, you're introducing ick in your tank by accident. Now, the last point that I want to make is any uh, thing that you used on this tank, whether it be siphoning hoses, nets, um, any kind of tools, buckets, anything like that, you want to make sure that you are not using those with any other of your tanks. Now, I have a variety of tanks behind you that you can't see here, and I do not use the hose for siphoning the water out of here. I do not use the bucket for siphoning the water out of here, the sponge for scrubbing the glass down. I do not use that for any other tanks in my uh, gallery simply because you're just moving the ick around from one tank to another. What I recommend is that if you do have a large amount of tanks for your aquariums, you know, if you have a door, for example, on the bottom of your uh, stand, Keep all the, the products that you use or the tools that you use separate for each tank if you have the ability to do that. Now I know you, not all of us are able to do that, but I'm going to give you a couple of techniques if you're not able to do that that are going to make it minimal for you to uh, uh, be able to uh, use those hoses. You want to sterilize them, number one, with bleach if you can. Uh, I think it's a uh, quarter part bleach to every gallon of water and uh, sterilize them really really well and uh, make sure that uh, you let them dry out thoroughly because it cannot survive in a dry situation. That's the important thing. Now a quick technique that I have figured out with hoses and things like that that don't have any metal on them Throw them in the microwave. Make sure there's water in your microwave, though, because you'll kill your microwave. You can't put things in the microwave that don't have some water in there. Uh, somebody in my uh, immediate uh, family uh, recommended that to me the other day. <laughs> I hadn't thought of it. But microwave those things for about 60 seconds, and anything that's in there, in those hoses or whatever, they're not going to be able to survive that. So that's a really quick way to guarantee after every time you 
you uh, maintenance your tank uh, for ick, that you're not going to, if you don't have the ability to buy a lot of hoses and stuff like that, you're going to be able to uh, move those hoses and stuff around. I would recommend not doing that, that you have a separate ick kit that you would use just for that particular tank. Uh, and, uh, you know, just that's probably the best way to do things. So anyways, to wrap this video up here, thank you for joining me today. Let's uh, have you put some comments down below if you've had ick problems and you are familiar with this product right here, ICX. Uh, let me know what your experience has been with it, whether or not you found this to be a good product to cure your ick situations. Talk about any of the things that I spoke about. If you want to leave comments down below about that, I'd appreciate it if you would because I'd really like to hear what you have to say. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and share with your friends because this channel grows based on everybody sharing these videos with your friends. Also, if uh, you get an opportunity to hit that bell up at the top there that gives you an opportunity to know whenever we have a new video coming out and uh, it, it will show up on your YouTube and uh, alert you that we do have some new content that's coming out. We do have some great things coming up here in the weeks to come. I hope that you'll stick with me. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. I know this isn't a great subject to talk about. It can be hell for some people, it really can, but it doesn't have to be. It can be one of those things that you can use this product right here and be very, very assured of what uh, this will do for you. And also the techniques that I gave you are so, so important to do if you're really gonna cure the, the ick problem in your tank. So anyways, thanks for joining me and we'll see you on the next one. Until then, thank you and we'll talk again soon.